information, the basic natural information from uh, recent years uh, is uh, the information that we have in the upper uh, part of uh, the origin and destination. And here there is an enriching process in the specific report that is important to highlight. This is an enrichment that uh, in at a TBPS scale. And we have the basic enrichment that is like extended knowledge. And what is it that it gives us as additional information? Well, the first statistic that we are sharing with you is uh, the total uh, total ATAM uh, traffic that was 60% uh, of the traffic. And LATAM accounts for one third of the internet uh, um, so we have access to one third of um, the internet uh, through this. Uh, the, we didn't want to share delicate information, but all this uh, publicly available. The increase of traffic from one country to the other in each country was 44 percent. And uh, if we look at each country individually, not comparing the bulk of traffic of each country doesn't mean that I don't mean to say that Mexico has more traffic than Argentina. We are speaking of growth. Many things grew uh, during the pandemic. As a matter of fact, uh, I gained 10 kilos in Mexico. It uh, duplicated the traffic. Argentina, 74 percent. Brazil, uh, Chile and Colombia didn't grow as much. That delta, that uh, variation, that's the overall traffic not uh, just uh, of each of the countries. So now if we look at further detail, the um, kind of apps, uh, video conference, uh, conference services, we notice that uh, when we started with uh, the lockdown measures and all that, uh, they forced the growth uh, of uh, video conference traffic, not just uh, for uh, work, but also schools, and we see that that impact uh, um, uh, dropped in uh, during weekends, and that was quite impressive with some apps up to 100 fold. This is not the total uh, traffic, or when we work with NetFlow, we will see that it has some limitations. This app that we 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 added five types of traffic five types of video conferences, and we added the volume of growth of the video conferences during that period. My wife, for instance, used it uh, for rehearsals of her band. And uh, looking at the human side, um, I admit that I played uh, during uh, this uh, period, and even person, people like myself uh, with uh, these uh, games, we participated of uh, the growth uh, that we uh, contribute to three times as much uh, uh, growth. And why is that important? Because uh, the internet patterns change. The people who didn't use um, those apps uh, started using them. And more important still, in Latin America, we have very strong links with other countries in Europe because uh, of uh, our uh, inheritance, colonization. So we saw that in three countries, there the uh, uh, the connections increased by three times. In Italy, at the beginning, Italy was the canary in the mine. It it's that is, um, it's the canary shows what uh, happens when uh, um, when uh, the gas increases in the mine. So this uh, was. Uh, um, the, the traffic in Italy increased uh, by like, three times. Spain uh, duplicated and Portugal almost uh, doubled. And although, well, the, but this is traffic based uh, on the, um, it, it's not a reference to Italy. That is, if I'm watching an Italian uh, channel and the content is in Italy, the server is in Italy, it's considered Italy. Now, um, if you have a local VPN, then it's not there. So that is important when you consider the origin of the traffic, and we'll see in the CDNs how that changes. So leaving statistics aside, I mentioned at the beginning how we monitor this with flow telemetry and enrichment. This uh, enrichment that uh, of uh, uh, SNP and BGP, we this has uh, 
uh, last link. So, and why am I saying this? Because only with layers three and four, we cannot identify the so-called over-the-top applications and, and with multiple CDNs. The term that we use, for instance, the Disney Plus, uh, um, as far as I know, used uh, Akamai. So I didn't manage to write a report with uh, such a level of information how much uh, traffic went to Disney+. Plus. I have to enrich it that, uh, to do something else. What kind of enrich enrichment can you do? And today it's done in some places. The enriching is based on the preamble of uh, an Internet access. So regular people don't use the uh, uh, IP internet. Uh, why am I speaking of normal people? Because here you may remember that Google is 8.8.8, and that is, they can remember the IP address, uh, but we don't work that way. We work with CDNs, etc. So there's always a preamble for DNS resolution, and that preamble can be used to identify the traffic, uh, the flow traffic, and see where it's heading. So how do we do that? In our case, we do it with uh, uh, with a DPI probes that collect information of that resolution preamble that is not in the same place, but it is in the data center where the servers are hosted. And by enriching the uh, NetFlow information, it's not a different NetFlow. It's the same one but with a layer 3, layer 4, but this traffic goes to this uh, these different disks, and it doesn't work as a CDN, but uh, the DNS resolution and the enrichment make it possible for us to add that classification. You can also use for other things. There are complications related to the use of TTL. If you want to ask later, I'm available to explain it a little further. But the, the idea of enrichment is not limited to that. Let me give you an example. If we have a subscriber's n network, um, you can enrich the information of NetFlow based um, on IP. You can put uh, the mobile phone and other things. There are complications for these uh, additional en uh, enrichments, for instance, speaking of mobiles, because one of the serious problems there are there is that all the traffic in the mobile uh, network is in ITT uh, tunnels, so the NetFlow doesn't ha is not used much in there. But, however, you can use it to enrich from the outside by using the index. So, though, well, those were my slides. I think that uh, I went a bit too fast. But I wanted to tell you that this information is available in our website, www.netscout.com, and uh, it is shared. And this is something that the entire NetFlow system can do based on uh, layer 3 and layer 4. Um, and uh, with you can remember that you can enrich it to increase the scope and to give uh, more real information. But the basic information was all done with layers three and four. I only added the enrichment just to explain some of the constraints. So we can now go over to the questions. Any questions in the room? Any questions for Julio? We are on time. So if you have any questions, please approach the microphones. So we have no Q&A questions from the remote participants. So that would be all with this presentation. Thank you very much.